Welcome back. Today we're taking a look at this 4093 Chaos NAND synthesizer that I purchased from Synthrotech and built as a kit. Uh, basically everything that you see included in this little box was included in the kit except the box and these knobs. It actually came with different knobs. I wasn't too crazy about them so I opted for these instead. Now what this basically is uh, this is a single IC noise maker of sorts, if you will, based on the 4093 quad two input NAND Smith trigger. I have a tech sheet over here to the side. I'll pull over real quick. It's just going to give a gander at that. Now you can see in the background here, it does say obsolete, which I'm sure by now this thing would be. And uh, I'm not going to go into detail on this particular IC chip because you can just get the data sheet yourself right in the link below and check it out but the kit itself was really easy to build um, unfortunately I did not have this camera when I built this in fact this channel didn't exist when I built this so all I do have is still pictures um, back in my earlier days I took a lot of pictures but just simply because I didn't have any video capabilities um, or you know it was on my tablet or cell phone and I have a tripod to hold it so I'm making a video is kind of a moot point where now I have obviously the equipment to do that but anyway what I'm planning on doing with this video is I'm gonna give you a brief overview here in in the video and then I'm gonna hook this up to my computer and record an audio file from it which I'll sync up at the end of the video with some pictures that you know from the assembly process and that's pretty much gonna be the video so as you can see here from the front of the unit, everything was hand drawn by pen and it's in a bare finish. I didn't actually paint this thing and I decided just to keep it this way because I thought it looked pretty neat. And if anything, it's going to get a clear coat just to protect the text on top of it. And well, basically all you're seeing is a bunch of switches and knobs and a couple inputs. Well, what does it all do? Well, this has basically got three oscillators in it. The first one over here is just a pitch oscillator and you can control the vo mean volume of the whole unit right over here. And as you obviously change the pitch you're gonna hear it go up and down. Uh, as a matter of fact you know what off in the distance here you can see I have my speaker and my amplifier box that I covered in another vehicle and this is all for a uh, 9 volt battery as is this unit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. <clears throat> Excuse me. So right, this gets plugged into my little input over here. I'll try to take some of this curvature out of the wire. This switch was meant to operate either external or internal power. Right now we're just using the internal battery. And there is a volume knob here. And then once we kick this on, you can hear that it immediately starts to make tone. I can adjust that to either very loud or very quiet. We'll leave it at a slight quiet volume right now because while well, my wife is still sleeping in the other room. Let me see if I change the pitch. Obviously it goes up. So you can't hear it anymore. I'm sure the neighborhood dogs would, would get driven nuts by this, but... And it will just keep doing this forever until you shut it off. And obviously if you hear that, you get like a dive bomb effect, which is pretty cool. So you notice that I'm turning on this main power switch right over here. Now the way this is set up, when you turn this main power switch on, it's drawing power from the battery unless you plug in the external adapter, which of course it would draw from there since this is a switched terminal. Um, but at the top here, you can see that there's actually a CV input and a CV select switch. So if this power is on and you put this over to CV, it's going to kill the power because there's no CV input. And unfortunately, I don't have a, a generator for the CV, so I can't really show you how that works. Now, most of the time with the CV input, you would use it on a synthesizer and you would use it to change the pitch or maybe get some like notes out of it. You can't really get notes out of this. You're just going to be adjusting the pitch. So as far as musicality is concerned it's not going to really be a musical instrument but you can make some pretty cool sounds with it that's for sure um, and obviously you can see there's a little LED at the top over here which kind of fades out with that same effect now this 
this kit is actually a little bit open source. You can go inside and um, kind of tweak it to your own liking. There is a breadboard section inside here that you can kind of add your own circuitry to. And one of the things this came with was this actual mod up here, which was the CV input and the switch, which works off of the DC jack, which you'll see when I open it up. The other mod um, that I remember seeing on their website, I believe, was a button that you can use to do the dive bomb effect with instead of shutting it off. But that's just something you can add in later. That's not such a big deal. Um, other things to note about this is on the back, I made my logo and put some rubber feet in the bottom just to keep it from sliding around. And this is just standard Hammond style box. It's the like, you know one you would use to make a, a stomp box out of. It's like a die cast uh, 1590 uh, DD or BB or I'll put a link in the description with the item number for this box. I don't really remember off the top of my head. But what can we do with this? Well, if I turn the main volume on, we get that pitch effect. It's almost like a theremin. But then I can turn on these oscillators and they'll actually oscillate the main pitch. And you can see like you can adjust the speed of the oscillator. And then using the two knobs at the same time, you can get some pretty crazy sounds. Now, curiously, you can actually turn the pitch all the way up. And just listen to the sound of the second oscillator. Which, actually, I label oscillator one because the main pitch knob here is, you know the base oscillator of the unit, so I consider this one and two, even though it's a three oscillator unit. And if I turn on the second one, this is where the chaos begins. Because now you're oscillating an oscillator that's oscillating another oscillator. So you can get some pretty rad sounds out of this thing. Hear the triple oscillation right there. And I should point out, by the way, this thing drives my wife absolutely nuts. I love playing with it, I think it's fun, but there's only so much you can take of it, honestly. It is a fun toy to play with, but. It's just, it's exactly that. It's a toy. And then likewise, I could just shut them off, get back to the main, main pitch. Uh, the reason why I went with these particular knobs, I should point out, is these are those nice kind of like rubbery mixer style knobs. I actually got them off of eBay for really cheap. Um, but the ones that came with, well, I should pull one of these off and show you first before I explain the new ones. You see, they, they're, they're pressure fit. There we go. If you see inside here, they got a a bit of a star pattern where the potentiometer here also has that same star pattern so when this fits on there it just press fits nice the ones it came with were meant for like a split shaft or a like uh, a potentiometer has like a flat end on it because there was a screw so you would center it on the, the pot and then screw it in and then that set screw would lock it on and the thing I didn't like about them is, is the way they sat some of these pots are just a little higher and the knobs didn't feel right. Not only that, but that set screw, when you use it on a pot that's not flattened, it tends to it tends to throw the knob just a little off center and it just felt weird turning it. So I just, like I said, opted to go with these instead. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this, turn my little amp off here and I'll open up the back of it here just to give you a peekaroo inside. Now I will point out, before we get in here, that I did have one problem when I was soldering this. And it was either I was in a rush, or it was late. Just didn't really put as much effort into it as I should have. 
But whatever the whatever the excuse I'll give you is, is there's one trace in here that kind of lifted off the board and didn't really come out the way I would have liked it to. But I fixed it. You see, this is the trace right over here. It's got some of that great kind of bodge job on there where I just went ahead and soldered a little wire over the top of it just to cover it up. And, uh, well, and that's all she wrote in the inside. I mean, it's really not a very complicated unit. To get this circuit board out, you would actually have to take all the nuts off the front of this and it drops through the other side. I could tell you that the LED, the CV in, the power switch for the CV in select over here, and the four pots and the audio input are all wired off the board, if you will. You can see the wires coming in the background over here. Um, whereas the three switches in the middle are actually soldered directly to the board. So that's what's keeping this board from moving around. And I quite like that. I mean, it's a pretty good mounting option. You know, you do have screws in the corner over here if you did actually want to mount this differently. In fact, you could just run wires to these points and, you know, wire in the switches instead of having them soldered directly to the board. But I decided to go with the default way of doing it. There are some spots where the pots get soldered in, where the pads are, are big enough where you can actually put these pots in that place. In fact, the, the potentiometers they give you don't have the little loop connectors at the ends. They actually have pins that are meant to go into the board. So you could engineer this a little differently and actually have the potentiometers hardwired into the board. But for the sake of argument, this was the easier way to go. You can see I have everything nicely heat shrinked in here. The white wire is the, the wire it actually came with, which was nice. A little spool was in the bag. Um, the battery clip, everything here, except this 9-volt clip. I, I have a bunch of these, so I just went ahead and you know, hot glued it into place just to keep this battery stable. But that's it. fits really nicely in there. I do have a uh, external power supply I could plug in. And if you look, you can actually run a pretty wide range of um, DC input voltages here, which is pretty nice. As far as I know, the sound doesn't change any with the voltage. So running it at 12 volt as opposed to running off a 9 volt as opposed to 5 volt doesn't really make much difference in sound as far as I can gather. And well, that's pretty much all there is to this video. So I'm going to go ahead now, I'm going to cut this footage and you should see pictures edited in of the build with some sound that I'll get off my computer.
and as always, thanks for watching.